So when was the last time you had friends over for dinner? Well, for many of us, it can be a stress circus. But our guest today believes that entertaining should be easy and delicious. Joining us from Napa Valley, California is Emmy Award winning Food Network chef, Michael Chiarello. Michael, it's great to have you with us today on Sidewalks. Oh, it's great to be here. Y'all ready for the springtime? You ready to invite some friends over for a little entertaining? I am so ready. Bring it on. <laughs> you know, that's what happens, especially after the season, the rain season that we've had. You have so many days of, of kind of gloomy rain, and, and what you really want to do is celebrate the oncoming season by inviting a bunch of friends over. But, you know, every time I do that, I invite, like, 20 extra friends, more, more than I thought, and I end up cooking dishes that I could never get done in time to be able to ever enjoy as a guest at my own party. So I just try to put my discipline in place and just say no to that. And there's a couple of tips to think of this spring when you're beginning to invite some friends over for a little, little welcome back sunshine party. Great. And that's to keep the recipes really simple. What you never want to do is, <laughs> is cook a recipe for the first time on somebody that you don't live with. <laughs> You know, maybe that's been my problem. What do you think? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, so if you really want to try that, invite somebody over for the week and try, try, try it ahead of time. Because that's really the problem when you're trying to look at a recipe and, and cook it for the first time and you forgot about nine ingredients. You cook dishes that you've cooked before and you can actually enjoy the experience of it. But also when it comes to entertainment, you want to cook some recipes that have some stories and some meaning, whether it's a recipe that you brought back from Italy on a trip or something. Those stories end up creating kind of the fabric of the flavor of the dishes at the same time. And at this time of the year, you want to keep it super seasonal. So, so you go out into the produce aisle and you look and it's, and it's all the peas and the asparagus and spring onions and spring garlic and things like this. That's what you want to kind of gather up by the armload and bring home because they're so fresh that all the flavor is really built in and you have very little to do in the kitchen yourself. Boy, that definitely would make entertaining a lot easier. What do you most enjoy about entertaining? You know what I enjoy about entertaining is really pulling my family and friends together and to be able to celebrate breaking and bread with each other and, and cooking with people at the same time, like a dish that I'm making right here in front of you. I have a little bit of a, asparagus that I'm cooking. I make a little cheese sauce. Now, now the bruschetta that I'm making, something like this, when I'm entertaining, I want to do it ahead of time. With, and the asparagus are already roasted ahead of time as well, so bruschetta and asparagus are done. And all I have to do is make my sauce because like we was talking about before, you want to be able to enjoy your friends and be able to tell those stories. To be able to do that, you need some extra time. So all of these things can be done ahead of time. Now the cheese sauce I make, I just take some heavy cream, some sea salt, plenty of black pepper because you want lots of flavor in there. Right. And now I'm using a little speed scratch trick here where I'm using a shredded cheese that's already flavored with sun-dried tomato and basil. And I'm making my little fonduta, my fondue sauce. That's one of the things in entertaining. I can say, you know, you can come over from a, some asparagus toast with cheese sauce, or how about a bruschetta di asparagi con fonduta di formaggio, right? Mm. It's a little restaurant trick. You get about $3 more a plate. You just nice. stir the cheese in like that. <laughs> and then when it's all done, you have it ready, you keep it warm. As soon as your guests sit down, you pour it right over. That sounds wonderful. Doesn't what isn't great? delicious with cheese? No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, I have like the all cheese network over here. <laughs> you, well, know, you know, there's people that have so many recipes that they love. People ask me all the time, Michael, you've done a half a dozen books. How can I do my own book? I think I, 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 think I need to be on TV and have my own cookbook. Well, we're doing a, a really fun kind of promotion where yeah, people tell get me about a chance that. to. They get a chance to submit their recipes, the stories of those recipes, and the winners get a chance to have their own cookbook published, their own personal cookbook published just for them. And all the, all the rules and regulations and how they go about it. And the recipes I cook today are at Sargento.com. Fabulous. That's awesome. Um, you know, you're most famous for taking ordinary foods and turning them into exotic entrees. Was that always a kind of a part of your background? Were you always really creative in the kitchen? Well, you know, in the restaurant business, when, years ago when I owned Trevina Restaurant up, uh, up in St. Helena, you know, I would there. always try to do, do fancy dishes that people had never saw before and some foie gras tucked in something, blah, 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 into a terrine, sliced, diced, and then fried. And, and people would get it, they'd like it, but what they really enjoyed the most is, is taking dishes that everybody understood and presented it in a way that they couldn't imagine. Now, how you can do that at home is taking something like the ordinary burger, Mm -hmm. doing a stuffed hamburger, like we did a four pound hamburger, 
that we stuff with roasted garlic and cheddar cheese, and we just cut the whole thing. We put it off on a big old loaf and cut it into pieces. And, and those are the kind of things where you can take in simple foods like that. You're not trying to impress people with, right. uh, with all of your technique and ingredients, but you, but you do want them to walk away saying, wasn't that clever? We had that four pound burger that he cut into pieces. Wow. Or a bread salad like I have here with peas and asparagus. Forever roasted pork, something that cooks itself in the oven for eight hours by itself. Or even a Caesar salad that you do whole leaf. You leave the leaves whole, people actually eat them with their hands. And I make a little cheddar cheese frico. This is like the best part of a grilled cheese sandwich, what sticks to the grill, except mm. I actually make these on purpose. And you just put <laughs> a big bowl of these, and I guarantee you, when they get done with a meal like this, they're gonna be coming back week after week. Michael, I always associate you with the Napa Valley and that kind of a lifestyle. How has this place inspired the way that you cook? Could, could you do what you do anywhere else? You know what, it, it, it's, it's funny that you asked that. I was just cooking yesterday and uh, in, in the Napa Valley, the season, I'm a farmer, I have a small winery and, and, a, and at Chiarella Vineyards, I'm out there all the time and I'm farming. And when I see the wild mustard going, I know it's springtime. It's a constant reminder when fall comes and the leaves change in my vineyard and it gets cool outside, I wanna cook dishes that are richer and more braised. So I think the, the seasonal way that we live, the, the ebb and flow of the seasons that's natural to the wine country, the harvest, the pressing and everything that really comes right. through in my food. And when I go to New York and I'm cooking, I find out before you know it, you gotta get a high chair out for my food because it's all <laughs> built up because I'm in a city and it gets all <laughs> architectural. So, so I kind of, I think by osmosis, you end up kind of right. cooking uh, by where you live. How did you first get started cooking? You know, it's the thing I've always done. I've never, never not wanted to be, since I was eight, I told my mom that I want to be a cook and own a restaurant one day. And you know, some people want to be firemen or policemen. I always just wanted to be a cook. Back in the days when there was no food network and there was no celebrity chef, nope. that you were really just choosing to be a craftsman. And I love that because one of the great things is you can love your family and friends through your food. And that's, my mother taught me how to do that. It's a great way to share your love for the people that you really care about. And you know what, if it didn't work out, and the dish was horrible, you throw it away, you start right over again. You don't have to wait, <laughs> wait more than five minutes. Right on. You know, I gotta, I've always wondered this, you know, there are a lot of cooking shows out right now, reality shows. Would you ever consider doing a cooking reality show? You know, you know, people ask me that from time to time. I've looked at some scripts, and, and I am a reality show. I mean, the, the show that I do is my reality. Now, and so if you want to come into my home and see what kind of, kind of goes on, I don't have that much drama in my life. I think I don't any, but you know, I, the, the one show I would like to do, I'd like to do a real rest. I'd like to do not a reality show, but I'd like to do a drama. Really? Because nobody's, nobody's ever done done a restaurant for what the scene is really really happening. There's all of these characters. There's the bartender and the waitress and the maitre d' and the host and the wine steward and the cooks and the busboys and the delivery men. You have, you have about 100 relationships going on at the same time, and it's perfect for a drama. Because before you know it, the, you know, you know uh, a, a, a female server has gone home with so-and-so, and then so-and-so is right. wondering about this. I mean, it's just a great <laughs> drama season. That's a show I like to do. You know, as an ex-restaurant girl myself, believe you me, I support that <laughs> idea. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> as yeah, we close, Michael, do you have any career advice for those rising chefs out there who'd like to, uh, to do this as a profession? You know, the, the most important thing you need to have is a discipline. You have to think more like the military. Not that I have kind of a militaristic mind, but this is a single focus drill about cooking. What you want to do is you want to, you want to uh, beg to work with the best possible chefs that you can work with anywhere in the world for as little money as you're, you're able to live on. Don't worry about your money now. If you handle your career right in the first five or ten years, right, they're going to they're gonna write your checks for the rest of your life. And then the other thing is you really want to emulate the master. Do a few years with a couple of different masters and then begin to create your own style of cooking. And that's really when you begin to sing and it gets fun. But you have to have some structure. You have to see how a style of cooking is really done. And don't worry about the press. Don't worry about the PR. Don't worry about everybody always asks me, oh, how do I get a food network show I, you know TV chooses you you don't choose TV when right it comes to this you have to have first you have something have to have something to say and then you have to go out and kind of stand on your soapbox and, and preach to the world um, on what your creations are all about Michael thank you so much for being with us today on sidewalks it was a pleasure having you oh, it was my pleasure being there have a fantastic spring and try a few of these tips at your house 
I will definitely do that. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye-bye. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit us at SidewalksTV.com, our YouTube channel, and don't forget to follow us on social media.